Hi everyone, my name is Anne-Marie Ridderhoff. I have a YouTube channel which you can search using my name. Today I'm going to be uh, pouring a, a 30 by 30 pour with Vallejo pouring medium and it's the new formula as you can see right here and I'm using the thicker paint the more um, what they call it is a studio acrylic so it's um, in jars or in tubes doesn't really matter uh, all you have to know is that it is thicker than the uh, fluid acrylics so no matter what you buy you put it in a cup you add some water that it is slightly more fluid uh, then if you have your paint in your cup you add 30 to 40 percent pouring medium you mix that until it's totally smooth and flat then you add water until you get the right consistency now the right consistency should pour off your stick I'll get another color maybe you can see it better but it has to come off the stick like honey see that it's really fluid and it doesn't come off in chunks it comes off nice and smooth and that's when you know that you have the right consistency now we're going to be adding um, silicone and this is the medium silicone oil we're going to be adding it to a couple of colors not all and what you do is just uh, a couple of drops because we're going to be using it in only a few colors not all colors so what you do is just give it a couple of stirs so that it's in the paint make sure you get the sides and the bottom and this one we added some that's it that's all you do no more than that we didn't put any in the green and we didn't put any in the light blue so that's it now what you do I'm going to be doing a dirty cup all you do is put all your colors in one cup and then put it on your canvas so I'm going to be starting with the white then I'm going to be adding some nice dark blue and as you can see I pour it from up high because uh, that way the colors really mix together and they will give each other a nice little boost to mix them up and make something pretty just like that just pour it in And you can already see things happening to the paint. I think we'd like a little bit more of the uh, turquoise. There we go. Now I have here a 30 by 30 and again I'll explain that as you can see this is the bare canvas and you can see that it is white so you know it's gessoed. You don't have to do anything. The only thing I do is add the little pegs in the corners to tighten up the canvas and I put the push pins in place so that the canvas doesn't touch the paint that flows over the sides. Now we have our cup ready. We take our canvas, place it on top and then just turn it around. And there we have the perfect placement. Now we push it up a little and we pull it back. And as you can see, there are some beautiful colors mixing together and playing and making some beautiful patterns that's where you see it all happening I'll put some on the corners because that's where you need to get the paint going over and if you have a palette knife it'll be even easier to just put that on the corners there because that's where you need the paint to go a little bit more down here now we take a torch this is just a normal torch creme brulee torch and what we do is we give it a tiny little torch just to bring out a couple of cells just to see what's happening and now I'm going to make it flow make it come down there you can see a little bit of canvas showing but we'll fix that later And while you do that, you can scrape it up from the uh, from the table, put it back on the canvas, and that will just help it over the sides a little bit more.
as you can see, pouring it down this way. Now it's always a good thing to have a little bit more paint left over in your cup because that, that way you can do much more to your canvas if you don't like what came out of the pour. And I'm covering up the sides as you can see and the corners so that everything is nicely covered. Now this is it. Now I'm going to torch the whole canvas. And depending on the colors you're going to use, you will see the uh, cells pop up and there will be things happening. And you can decide if you like it or if you don't like it or you want to add something to it. Now this is a very plain um, pour that I did just to show you the possibilities of what's, what you can do and what you can achieve with this acrylic pouring. Now, as you can see here, it was pretty much mixed up. The colors are pretty close together. Here you can see the colors coming through the, uh, the top layer. Now, if you want to add something, and I like adding um, the ribbons, what I do is I cut off the rim of the, uh, of the cup because that way I can squeeze the cup easily and determine you know, how broad those ribbons really are going to be. So I'm going to put some uh, colors in my cup and a little bit of dark. I like the dark. As you can see, the cells are still growing and you could use this as a background to put a transfer on or you could use a stencil or anything you really like. The possibilities are really endless. But I'm going to show you how I usually put the ribbons on top. So I'm just going to leave this as is and I'm going to come in with my cup. I'm going to press this together so I get a nice sharp little sprout and then I'm going to come in with my color. I'm going to leave this because I like it and I'm going to put one over here, make it a little bit more interesting. Then I tilt it and as you can see all the paint is moving and as you can see it's giving it a nice flowy impression which I really like. Then I come back in with my torch and we're all going to make sure that some more cells pop up. There we go. So the piece that was uh, sort of um, quiet and sort of not interesting, now we've made it into something totally different and the cells are popping all over the place. Look at that. I'll give you a close up. And just depending on how the colors flow over each other, you'll see that you get different effects and um, it just has something to it, you know, it pulls the attention to the piece because we have a nice corner here filled with beautiful cells and down here we have a lot of cell action going on and then we have this beautiful explosion of cells in the ribbons. That's really nice. But there are a lot of things you can do and uh, don't let your imagination stop you because even if we were to say that we didn't like this part because here we have a lot of cells popping up, but here we don't have that many cells. What you can do is just pull the paint and do something like this. And when you pull it, you come in with your torch and we just torch it and bam, there comes the cells because the cell action will be just be there because we've pushed the paint over each other. we we'll do another one. As you can see, look at those cells, they're exploding. And that's the, um, that's the influence of the new pouring medium that does that. So we just create more of a flow in the paint and when you torch it, automatically all those cells appear. Now, I think this is uh, more, than I, uh, more than I bargained for. So there's a lot of cells going on. I love this piece here. 
I love what I did with the palette knife here and I think it's done because I like a little bit of uh, calmness up here and more of the busy part down here in the canvas and that's sort of what I was going for so I'm very happy about it I'll just give it one more little let's see there you go that's in focus and here you can see what I added oh I got my little microphone in the way Here you can see what I added with the palette knife, which is beautiful too. The only thing what happened now is I got my microphone cable in, my, in the paint, so I'll have to fix that a little bit. There we go. Then come back in. See how that sells up? That is beautiful. That really is. And that's really all there is to it. Now. Um, just when you put it away make sure that your uh, canvas is level um, if you have to have one buy one of those water levels and make sure everything is level because it's very important that your painting can um, lay somewhere be level and dry exactly like this because that's what we're going for we want it to dry like this so if you've been watching both videos the first one is with the fluid acrylics and the very thick pouring medium um, because both are very fluid it just moves and grows and grows and that is a total different way of pouring than this because this will dry exactly like I have right here this may grow a little bit more uh, this will stay exactly as it is and that's the difference between fluid and the thicker acrylic paint so I think we've uh, done a good job and I'd like to say thanks all for watching. Go and buy yourself some new pouring medium. You'll get the same effects that I get. Thank you Vallejo for creating this. It was a lot of fun to work with. So thank you.